Welcome back to our channel, where we delve into the profound stories of black history, shining a light on the untold narratives and extraordinary individuals who shaped our world. Today, we embark on a journey through time to explore the remarkable story of Gabriel Prosser, a pivotal figure in the fight against slavery and the quest for freedom, and how he was betrayed by none other than his kinsmen. Unveiling a lesser-known chapter in the history of North American slavery, Gabriel's conspiracy emerges as a pivotal yet thwarted plan that aimed to shatter the chains of bondage in Virginia. This audacious plot, spearheaded by Gabriel, an enslaved blacksmith, captivates with its intricate origins and widespread reach. But just hours before the conspirators could gather, a twist of fate intervened, leaving us to wonder, what exactly unfolded on that fateful night of August 30, 1800? Join us on a journey through this gripping tale of betrayal, prosecution, and the far-reaching implications that reverberated across society. Discover the aftermath of the aborted uprising that altered the course of slave laws and even influenced political discourse during a crucial presidential race. Brace yourself for an enthralling account of resilience, struggle, and the indomitable spirit that fueled Gabriel's conspiracy. While we dive deeper into Gabriel Prosser's story, it would be great if you took some time to like this video. Subscribe and drop your comments in the comments section. Gabriel was a slave of high economic worth. Adept at carpentry and blacksmithing, he also knew how to read and write. Jupiter was the possession of Nathaniel Wilkinson, Johnson's landlord, and a neighbor of Thomas Henry Prosser, master of Gabriel. He too was a skilled slave, as indicated by his valuation at his 1800 trial. Gabriel's brother Solomon, also a slave of Prosser, was a blacksmith of great monetary worth. The three slaves knew the Richmond area well and had made extensive contacts even before they began to organize slaves. All of them would commit themselves to large-scale collective resistance in Gabriel's plot of 1800, with Gabriel assuming the lead, Jupiter acting as an important means of connection between the main force of insurrectionists and an ally at the Capitol building, and Solomon initially providing full support but eventually aiding the prosecution of the conspirators to gain judicial mercy. Late in the spring of 1800, a group of enslaved men who were held on plantations in the neighborhood of the Brook, north of Richmond, initiated a plot to obtain their freedom. Sam Bird Jr., who was enslaved by a widow named Jane Clark, seems to have been the one to propose the original plan. He found sympathetic ears among George Smith, an enslaved man of another widow, Ann Smith, Gilbert, who was held by William Young, and Ben Woolfolk, a hired enslaved man, who also worked at Young's plantation. Also in the plot was Jack Bowler, also known as Jack Ditcher, a large, powerful man who worked in the neighborhood despite being owned by a widow in Caroline County. And of course, there was Gabriel, also a large man and a blacksmith owned by Thomas Henry Prosser. Each man used his connections, his friends, acquaintances, and relatives to find other conspirators and thereby shape the geographical spread of the plot while leaving its core leadership in the neighborhood of the brook. It is not clear how Byrd's plan might have changed over time as the conspirators periodically gathered in the shade of bridges, near springs, at religious gatherings, and after a funeral. But by August, a plan had been devised that included a nighttime attack on Richmond. A party of about 50 men would slip into the lower part of the town and set fire to the area's predominantly wooden structures to draw the city's residents into fighting the conflagration. Meanwhile, the main column of men would first attack the white residents of the brook and then swarm into Upper Richmond, overcoming the few guards who watched over state arms on deposit at the Capitol and Penitentiary, as well as at the public magazine. These men also intended to seize Governor Monroe, if not kill him. Once fully armed, they would destroy the exhausted firefighters as they struggled home. Because their plan to overrun the guards did not require that most men be equipped with firearms at the outset, blacksmiths like Gabriel, his brother Solomon, and Thornton, who worked at a forge at Hanover Courthouse, refashioned scythe blades into swords. One witness claimed that 12 dozen such weapons were created. In addition, Jack Bowler reported that he had made 50 pikes or spears by affixing bayonets to the ends of poles. In the end, the rendezvous scheduled for the night of August 30th never took place. That morning, Pharaoh and Tom, enslaved men owned by members of the Shepherd family, made their way to Richmond and told Mosby Shepherd of the plot. He passed on the warning first to family members and then to Monroe, who ordered patrols to be sent out. Toward sundown, a massive storm of wind and rain made any gathering of conspirators impossible, so the leaders, unaware of the betrayal, 
postponed the attack for one night. By then, patrols had already begun detaining suspects. The conspiracy collapsed. Gabriel and Jack Bowler, the two most senior men in charge, disappeared. The warning from Mosby Shepard sparked patrols from Richmond and sent a warning to Petersburg, where rumors of a revolt had already surfaced early in August. Men from the brook were soon taken up and placed in the public jail and penitentiary, and more were arrested as the evidence mounted. By December 1st, 72 men had been tried, 58 in Henrico County, 3 in Richmond City, 9 more in Caroline County, and 1 each in Louisa and Dinwiddie counties, assuming the latter two trials were connected to Gabriel's plot. Of these 72, 26 were found guilty and hanged, all but one in Henrico and Richmond. Eight were later transported, 13 were declared guilty but pardoned by the governor, and 25 more were acquitted by local judges or magistrates. Both Gabriel and Jack Bowler were among those captured and tried. After boarding a vessel downstream of Richmond, Gabriel had sailed to Norfolk, possibly with the connivance of the schooner's captain, Richardson Taylor. On September 23rd in Norfolk, one of the vessel's enslaved crewmen turned Gabriel in. Gabriel was tried and convicted on October 6th and hanged in Richmond on October 10th. Jack Bowler, meanwhile, surrendered on October 9th, was convicted on October 29th, and was transported out of state. More than two dozen enslaved men and one enslaved woman testified at the trials, the overwhelming number giving evidence of a defendant's participation. Three men in particular provided the bulk of the testimony. Ben, who was enslaved by Thomas Henry Prosser and who worked with Gabriel, and John, enslaved by Sally Price but hired out in Richmond. The third, Ben Woolfolk, was enslaved by Paul Graham of Caroline and Hanover but had been hired by William Young. Woolfolk was found guilty, but in exchange for a pardon, he confessed and surrendered many names. Gabriel Prosser's rebellion and the subsequent betrayal had a significant impact on the liberation movement and the state of Virginia. While the Gabriel Prosser Rebellion of 1800 did not succeed in achieving its immediate goals, it had far-reaching consequences that affected the political landscape and policies in Virginia. Also, the betrayal by a black person to other blacks during Gabriel Prosser's rebellion was profound and far-reaching. It caused deep mistrust, fractured unity, and significant consequences for the enslaved black community. The betrayal shattered the trust that had been placed in fellow black individuals. It created a sense of suspicion and skepticism within the community, as people questioned the loyalty and motives of those around them. The loss of trust undermined the unity that had been forming among the black population, making it harder for them to work together towards a common goal. It also reinforced existing racial hierarchies and power dynamics. The perception of disloyalty within the black community was used to justify the subjugation and continued enslavement of black people. The white authorities used the betrayal as evidence to portray the enslaved population as untrustworthy and in need of strict control. There was also a profound psychological impact on the black community. It caused emotional distress, disillusionment, and a sense of betrayal. The knowledge that someone within their ranks had chosen to betray their cause and side with the oppressors left a lasting impact on the collective consciousness of the black population. Its consequences served as a cautionary tale for future resistance movements. It created a climate of fear and discouraged some individuals from actively participating in acts of rebellion or resistance. The fear of betrayal and its repercussions lingered within the black community, making it more challenging to organize and unite for future liberation efforts. The betrayal ultimately led to the revelation of Gabriel Prosser's plans to the authorities. As a result, the rebellion was preemptively suppressed preventing it from reaching its intended scale and potential success. It directly contributed to the failure of the rebellion and the subsequent consequences faced by its participants. Following the rebellion, Virginia's white population grew fearful of future slave uprisings. As a result, the state implemented stricter control measures, including increased surveillance, curfews, and restrictions on the movement of enslaved people. Slave patrols and militias were also bolstered to maintain order and suppress any potential revolts. The Virginia legislature passed laws that restricted the education and assembly of enslaved individuals. These laws aimed to limit opportunities for organized resistance and intellectual empowerment among the enslaved population. Manumission, the act of freeing enslaved individuals, became more difficult in Virginia after Gabriel Prosser's rebellion. The state enacted laws that placed strict regulations and limitations on the process of freeing enslaved people. This was done to discourage sympathetic white individuals from supporting the abolitionist cause 
and to reinforce the institution of slavery. Prosser's rebellion further intensified existing racial tensions in Virginia and contributed to the entrenchment of racial segregation and discrimination. The fear of slave uprisings led to the reinforcement of racial hierarchies and the implementation of laws and social norms that enforced the separation and subjugation of black people. The aftermath of the rebellion had an impact beyond Virginia. It raised awareness about the harsh realities of slavery and fueled debates about the morality and sustainability of the institution. It inspired and energized the abolitionist movement, both within Virginia and across the United States, as it highlighted the urgent need for emancipation and equal rights. Despite the immediate setbacks and increased repression, Gabriel Prosser's rebellion served as a symbol of resistance and resilience for future generations of black freedom fighters. It provided a historical reference point and a reminder of the determination and courage required to challenge oppression. While Gabriel Prosser's rebellion was ultimately crushed, its ripple effects reverberated through Virginia and beyond. The rebellion and its aftermath heightened tensions, increased repression, and solidified the determination of both the enslaved population and abolitionists in their fight against slavery and for equal rights. Among African Americans, meanwhile, Gabriel's plot appears to have remained a blueprint for conspiratorial whispers, especially in the years immediately following the aborted plot. In 1802, rumors of a planned insurrection circulated again in Henrico County, and in two separate incidents, four men were tried for conspiracy and three convicted. General Gabriel, meanwhile, became a name revered in story and song. Today, Gabriel Prosser's story continues to inspire those who seek justice and equality. His legacy reminds us that the fight for freedom is a continual struggle and that even in the face of adversity, individuals can rise and challenge oppressive systems. Prosser's rebellion stands as a testament to the indomitable spirit of the human quest for freedom and serves as a rallying cry for those who believe in the inherent dignity and rights of all individuals. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to give us a like, subscribe and turn on notifications for future videos. Thanks for watching.